Hi, I'm Jeffrey, and right now we are going to be answering the question, who wrote the Bible? Now, the Bible is a book that is made up of several smaller documents, which are also called books. And those documents were written by many different people. Tradition identifies uh, 35 different people that are associated with those books, as well as plenty of anonymous uh, books. These are books that we don't know who wrote them, but somebody did. And so we're going to take a high-level view of where these books of the Bible came from, uh, and the humans that both wrote them and contributed to the Bible that we know after the main documents were written. So, when we answer the question, who wrote the Bible, we're going to be looking at three different types of answers. We're going to look at the sources. This is where we get into more of the spiritual side of where these books of the Bible came from, as well as some regular original sources that the authors uh, cite. We're also going to look at the humans that wrote the Bible. Now, like I mentioned, church history identifies 35 names of people that have been credited with writing books of the Bible, uh, and there were uh, more than 40 different individuals that contributed. And then we're also going to look at the scribes and scholars. These people played a critical role in uh, giving us the Bible that we have today that is often overlooked. So these aren't necessarily the authors of the Bible, but a lot of the, the documents that, that we have today we have because of these people. So it's very important that we, uh, that we recognize this too. So let's jump in. When we look at the Bible's sources, the main one that you're going to hear from Christians is God himself. Uh, there's this idea of divine inspiration. And we get that from uh, how some of the people who were writing books that made it into the Bible uh, talk about where these words come from. You'll find in the Old Testament people saying all the time, the word of the Lord came to so-and-so, or thus says the Lord. And what we find out uh, through reading the Bible and also just looking at Christian and Jewish history is people believed that uh, the books of the Bible, especially the books of the Old Testament, uh, were written by humans but were uh, inspired or prompted by God's Spirit. Uh, the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy, and he says that all scripture, those are the books of the Old Testament, is God-breathed or God-inspired. And the author of 2 Peter tells his readers that none of the prophets in the Old Testament were just writing based on their own initiative. They were carried along by God's Spirit. So, although we're going to see a lot of human perspectives in the books of the Bible, and these perspectives are brought in by those individual authors, and of course the, uh, the perspectives of the scribes and scholars after them, uh, we still have this belief that uh, these folks were prompted by God's Spirit. They were writing out of loyalty and devotion uh, to God. There are a few other sources that are not as spiritual as, as this. Uh, we have oral traditions. These are stories that were handed down generation to generation and eventually were, were used by or and referenced by the, the writers of scripture. We have ancient songs. A great example of an ancient song being used is in the book of Judges, where someone, we don't know who wrote the book of Judges, uh, is putting together this picture of how the nation of Israel uh, devolved without any sort of godly leadership. And there's at one point when uh, they quote a song, uh, it's called the Song of Deborah, and this piece of ancient Hebrew poetry is far older than the rest of the book of Judges. Uh, it's, uh, it's ancient, it's old, but it's used as part of a book that was written afterward. We have wise sayings that are pulled in, wise sayings from the Jewish leaders, wise sayings from, uh, from other people that may not have been part of the Jewish faith. We have letters and decrees. You're going to find uh, letters that were written from uh, religious leaders to their followers. You're going to find decrees written by kings and emperors. Uh, these, are, these are 
pulled in to the books that, uh, that are in our Bible. We have historical records from you know, kings and monarchs, uh, or kings and monarchies of the ancient world, and we have eyewitness testimony. Uh, for example, in the Gospel of Luke, the author claims that uh, he's pulled together uh, these, these testimonies from other people uh, that, uh, that were present during the life and times of Jesus. So uh, these, are, these are the sources. This is uh, some of where the, uh, the people that wrote the Bible were drawing from. Obviously, the chief one, the most important one, uh, to, uh, to the religious side of biblical discussion is uh, that divine inspiration. Now, let's look at the human authors of Scripture. I'm not going to get into the list of all 35 uh, authors of the Bible that are traditionally associated with these books, but you can find that list on OverviewBible.com. What we want to get an idea of is the roles of the people that contributed. So, when we're looking at contributors, uh, the, the chief type of contributor uh, to what we, what we call the Bible today are the prophets. And these are humans who spoke and wrote on God's behalf. They were usually calling people to live in obedience or loyalty to Israel's God. Uh, the Old Testament books are often named after the prophet that, uh, that uh, wrote the majority of the, the text in those books. So when we see uh, the book of Ezekiel, well, most of the book of Ezekiel was, was written, we believe, by the prophet Ezekiel. And you see that with um, most of the books that are toward the end of the Old Testament. Some examples of prophets that contributed to Scripture. We have Moses. He's the person who led Israel out of Exodus, uh, up to the edge of the Promised Land. He's credited with giving the Israelites that original Torah, the original laws from God. He made several agreements with the people of Israel. And uh, in those first five books of the Bible, which is what we call the Torah today, uh, we see a couple of actions, or there are a couple episodes in which Moses is writing down things that are happening. Now, obviously, there was, the, in, in the Torah, we see episodes that Moses probably didn't write. Things like uh, saying that he was the most humble man in the world, or where Moses died, and how nobody knows where Moses died. Those are some things that, uh, that we also find in the Torah, which is why these scribes and scholars are going to be important for us to look at in just a little bit. In addition to Moses, another great example of a prophet is David. David was a king. He was a musician. He was a songwriter. And he produced a great deal of songs that are preserved in the Book of Psalms. But only about half of those psalms are credited to or associated with David. Where did the others come from, and how did they come together into that body of 150? Well, that's where this third category becomes important. It's very, very interesting how these two work together. Uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Joel, these are those prophets whose books are named after themselves. They wrote these long, epic poems. Uh, about how the relationship with Israel and their God was playing out. Very, very key contributors to the text of the Bible. Then we have a group of people that I'm calling the sages. These are wise people, the most famous of whom was, of course, King Solomon. Uh, they wrote proverbs, riddles, stories, and songs to help people make just and godly decisions uh, when they were, as, as they were going about their lives. We have historians. These are people who chronicled the stories in ways that made a theological point. Luke is a really good example of this. He wrote the, uh, the books of Luke and Acts, uh, so church tradition tells us, that fall in the New Testament. But we also have Old Testament historians as well. When we look at the books of Joshua and Judges, Samuel and Kings, Chronicles, Ezra and Nehemiah. These are, these are stories that are telling the history of Israel, but they're telling it in a way to make certain theological points. So it's not, uh, it's not necessarily that they were historians the way we would think of historians today. They're theological historians. They are trying to teach a spiritual truth in the way they're arranging history. 
And then, of course, we have, for the New Testament, the apostles and their associates. So an apostle was someone who was sent by Jesus Christ to build his church on earth. And so these were close followers of Jesus who were the leaders of the early church. Uh, examples of this are include Matthew. Matthew wrote uh, the Gospel of Matthew, according to church tradition. And uh, that's the first book of the New Testament. The Apostle Paul wrote many letters to local churches of his day. And then we also have people who weren't necessarily apostles, but were associated closely enough with the apostles for, for them to be writing under their authority. And their writings were also deemed very valuable by the Christian church. A great example of this is Mark. Mark is credited with writing the gospel that bears his name. And uh, as far as the church has been concerned, pretty much since the beginning, uh, the gospel of Mark has been associated with St. Peter. Uh, the, the idea is that Mark, although he's not an apostle, wrote that gospel from Peter's memory and Peter's notes. And there's a lot of uh, conversation across church history that, uh, that is pointed to this being what Christians have believed for a very long time. This brings us to the third answer to this question of who wrote the Bible, or where did we get the text of the Bible? And we want to look at scribes and scholars. These people played a very crucial role in giving us the Bible that we have today, because uh, they, did, they did three really important things for us. One is they organized scripture. So uh, we have scribes that were pulling together documents that were written over long stretches of time and putting them together into uh, the cohesive documents and sets of documents that we have now. A great example of this is the book of Psalms. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. So King David was a musician king, and he's credited uh, with producing some songs that praise God. But how... Uh, how did those songs come together to make half of the book of Psalms? And where did the other Psalms come from? Who made the call of pulling these together? Well, we don't know. That part of the work is anonymous. But we do know that somehow we get to a point at which we have 150 Psalms that are patched together into one really cohesive and well-organized work. It's a, it's a really important thing that we have the scribes and scholars to thank for this. Psalms is a great example of this. Proverbs pulls together seven different collections of wise sayings. It is, uh, it's very, very vital what the scribes and scholars did. In addition to this, they were key in preserving texts. So uh, the Israelites believed that Moses gave them the original Torah, uh, and there are points at which we see Moses writing things down. But keeping that Torah, uh, preserving the books of the Bible, was no small task. We have scribes and scholars to thank for that. Uh, they kept these books, they copied these books very meticulously and very faithfully. Uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why the Dead Sea Scrolls was such an important discovery, uh, in the past century, because we have uh, we have this evidence of very, very, very old uh, documents from the Jewish faith that still match up really, really nicely with later documents uh, that uh, that we had been using for a long time. So uh, these these folks were keeping the keeping the books together and preserving them and copying them so that other people could read them and so that they would last because. Old-time parchment doesn't last forever. The third thing that we want to look at when we, uh, when we talk about scribes and scholars is how they canonize the books of the Bible. Eventually, uh, Christian leaders made the decision to, uh, to say some books belong in the Bible. These books are sacred scripture. And obviously, that was not a decision that was taken lightly and not one that happened very quickly. Uh, it didn't happen until centuries after Jesus uh, that uh, the, the leaders of different Christian traditions said, these are the books that we believe belong in our Bible, that uh, have demonstrated value and uh, cohesion and uh, something, that, something that we believe is sacred and useful, not only for the church of their time, but had been useful for the church 
uh, in the centuries leading up to their time, they believed would be useful for as long as Christianity would be a thing. And so that gives you a high-level idea of who wrote the Bible. The books that we have in the Bible uh, were organized and preserved and canonized by scribes and scholars who uh, used the documents that originally came from various humans uh, over the course of history. And these humans wrote uh, out of loyalty and uh, dedication and devotion to the God that was inspiring these poems and these stories and these sayings that they had put together over hundreds of years. That's why it's kind of an interesting question to answer. Who wrote the Bible? We have a lot of people that played a hand in the Bible that we have today. Now, if you'd like to know more about where we got the Bible and how all the books of the Bible fit together, you should check out my book. It's called The Beginner's Guide to the Bible, and it'll walk you through the entire process of how we got the Bible. It goes into a lot more detail than what I was able to do up here. If you would like to see more videos like this, I encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, and that way I can notify you just as soon as the next one goes live. I'm Jeffrey with Overview Bible. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful.